welcome to the Recovery Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Abbasi. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and stroke survivor. Today, I want to talk about the relationship between faith, patience, and finding purpose in our daily lives. This is uh, something that came up in my meeting this morning, and it's also something that I talked a little bit about with my psychiatrist this week. Um, So what I heard this morning is that faith and patience have a strong tie to each other, and that really resonated with me. Um. One way that I find patience, long-term patience, is to set a purpose for each day. So when I was thinking about this today, I was thinking about faith. If I were looking at these three terms, faith, patience, and purpose, on a timeline or a scale of some sort, I would say that faith is the longest term, the longest length of time on that timeline. Patience is in shorter chunks. I hope this makes sense. And purpose, I would break down to the day. Um, that is how I have found living in recovery works for me. If I can wake up, as I've mentioned to you before, if I can wake up in the morning and think about that, you know, first remind myself I'm an alcoholic, remind myself I had a stroke and I, um, have a disability and then, once I have those truths, set my purpose for the day, set my goals for the day. How am I going to surface joy today? That's where my patience and faith is able to also wake up with me in the morning. Um, so I want to talk about how these the relationship between these three can um, support our recovery. Um, One thing I learned this morning was uh, the the meditation that we did in the morning mentioned that Anne Lamott, who is the author, she's an American author. She has written a ton of books. One of them is called Bird by Bird, if you've ever heard of it. I listened to it. as a one of the many books that I have been studying in order to write my book, um, because it was recommended. And the meditation said that Anne Lamott said this, that faith isn't about how we feel, it's about how we live. Um, I went online with my limited ability to scroll, um, and I couldn't find it right offhand where she said that but that's what the that's what the meditation said so if tamara levitt says it on calm then it's got to be true (laughs) so um this perspective about faith about it not being how we feel but how we live is something that um i enjoyed thinking about today because Faith being just how we feel makes it seem not very strong. But when we invite it into how we behave, how we live, then it seems to grow some legs. You know, it seems to really have a strong foundation that can last. And that, as I said, that's the longest one on this scale or timeline that I have in my mind. Um, And so in order for it to be that long-term, that lifelong thing, um, 
it needs to be the 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 way that we live not just how we feel so this perspective on it has been pretty meaningful to me today um i was thinking about how faith is like a slow burning candle that lasts an entire lifeline and it provides this steady gentle light throughout our lives um and i was thinking in order to feed that flame i need patience that is like the oil that is providing the light providing the the um the flame so what can interrupt my patience and in turn um let that flame that flame of faith burn out and a couple things that came to mind that somebody reminded me of this morning in my meeting was fear and self-will um can can take away my patience um but there are certainly other factors as well um distractions uh you know kind of turning away from my my goals and that is that can be for you know years at a time months at a time weeks at a time and that's what ends up pulling me away from feeling sane in this recovery i'll get distracted i'll start having maybe unrealistic expectations when one thing that i did today was i picked up i picked up the phone and i called somebody because um as i mentioned this is something that can if i start isolating i can start feeling um depressed and i start setting unrealistic expectations that i can just sit back and have people call me <laughs> you know and when i sit back and allow that to happen um I start getting distracted from my goal of constantly trying to surface that joy in my life. And um, when I try to achieve quick results, that also contributes to a sense of restlessness and I stop having that patience. And this is something that has been happening a lot with my doctor's appointments. Whenever I have a doctor's appointment, I get depressed afterwards because I get impatient. I get restless. I want everything to be resolved right now. And I lose sight of that day's purpose and it's easy for me to get caught up in that and allow it to just snuff out the flame you know and and lose my faith in why i'm here um i'll get to the point where i'm like what's the point you know what's the point in doing all of this why am i even trying anymore so how do i cultivate patients and try to make sure that that flame of faith keeps burning. Um, one of the ways that I do that is to set a clear purpose each day. So by doing that, I can have a sense of direction and I'm able to stay grounded in the truth of who I am and what's happening in my life right now. And I can stay focused. I can continue to get excited about all these ideas I have. I'm telling you, <laughs> I have so many ideas. And so I know that I'm well on my way to 
being healthy. Um, I even have, for example, this is a um, maple syrup bottle. <laughs> okay. And I've told you guys that I'm all into upcycling now. So I've made, uh, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but I've made a couple purses out of some old uh, dog coats that my puppies outgrew. And I made a basket that I used some old clothes that I was going to donate to Goodwill. And I cut them into one inch pieces, uh, long strips, that's the word, and braided them together and then sewed it into a basket. Um, and <clears throat> I think I actually put that one on my website, but I have not added the purses yet. So I was just wrapping up for the evening tonight and I made some, some pecan, pecan, however you like to say it, pecan, um, maple syrup, Brussels sprouts. And so I go through some maple syrup in the house and I only like true 100% maple syrup. And so I finished one of the bottles of maple syrup and I had this bottle and I was like, huh, I wonder if the label comes off of that. So sure enough, the label came off of the bottle. And then I was like, I wonder what I can do with a bottle. <laughs> So I found all these different things that you can do with bottles, of course. And I thought, you know, it would be really cool is if I could cut this bottle in half and have it not be sharp. And I could make, uh, I don't want to give away the magic, but make something, a couple things out of it. And I also looked up terrariums that you can make out of glass bottles and, um, like serving trays, if you cut the bottle lengthwise and you can make open it and make serving trays out of it. So anyway, my mind is constantly going. It's constantly going. And that's the example of finding my purpose each day. That's what I do. I, I the, These ideas are what helps me have that purpose. And if I have ideas, I have purpose. And if I have purpose, I have patience. And if I have patience, I have faith. So that's where I'm going with this. It all starts with a maple syrup bottle. Um, but so what is my question for the day? And this, or what is my purpose for the day? And this helps to as I think about it, I get excited and then I get to figure out how can I turn my purpose for the day, my actions for today and weave them into my long-term goals and my values in my life. How can I make this glass bottle support recovery? That is, that is the goal. Um, so you see, like, I'm not just looking at the glass bottle and being like, oh, I could fill this with water and put a flower in it and make a vase. Or I could, I don't know, fill it with oil and make an oil um, lamp out of it. Like, there's so many things you can do with a bottle. But my challenge is what can I do with this bottle so that I could upcycle it and have it represent something that has to do with recovery? How could I possibly make money off of this maple syrup bottle? Um, these are the things that help me to go to sleep at night. And these are the things that help me to wake up in the morning with excitement. Um, for me, it's all about having a vision that gives my life direction and purpose, something greater than myself, something greater than the day itself. But it starts with the day. It starts with the moment I open my eyes. Um, so 
what I like to do is keep this podcast as a um, anchor for my recovery. And then I, you know, of course, do my my vestibular therapy throughout the day. Like I have to have that um, surrounding my anchor, you know, um, I need to call people, call at least one person each day. And that allows me to make sure that I'm not isolating, I'm connected. So all of these things, these small intentional actions build, um, build more weight to my patience. You know, um, the more I can stay occupied and aligned with my values and my purpose, the, the greater patience I have to, um, to wait for what tomorrow brings right to to not be like i need to know what uh job i'm going to have in the future i need to know like am i ever going to work again like all of these unanswered questions that for quite some time this over the past year i've been feeling hopeless and um and so that's what I'm trying to articulate is, is how these small things that I'm doing are building this foundation of patience that is feeding my flame of faith, that everything's going to be fine. Everything is fine. Um, and that helps me navigate what's going on, all of the challenges so it helps me to not feel like I'm just sitting around and just sliding along through life. You know, um, each, each day has a purpose and each, um, and that purpose feeds something greater than myself. And it ends up having a ripple effect to, um, my actions outside of just what I have planned for the day and my attitude towards other people. And if I can create those ripples, it just reinforces, you know, it's feeding itself. And, um, so I think that what I've received that has given me this perspective is has been really given to me by just showing up, just waking up. Um, in the beginning, when like over the past year, when I'm waking up and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I can't use my eyes. I mean, I can't, I vividly, remember. And, and I have to say, I still have some days like that, that I wake up and I'm just like, I'm so frustrated that I can't use my eyes. Like I want to do this or that. Um, but the more experience that I have getting up and creating this daily purpose, um, and these daily actions, the more that I'm convinced that I can do it. Um, just like when I first got sober and I needed to do all my first, you know, go to my first happy hour, go to my first wedding sober, um, all of these things, like they built a um, courage and, um, and, I can't think of the word it it's convinced me that I'm able, you know, I'm capable. So, um, 
fear, self-will, distractions, um, impatience. It's, it's all natural. It's part of my journey. Um, it's been a big part of my past year, but I really think that for me, it all starts with when I open my eyes in the morning and I can make an impact on my entire day just by my self-talk when I wake up. So, um, you know, I challenge you to try to do the same thing. I, I can't tell you how many times when I was working that I woke up in the morning and I dreaded spending an entire day working. And yet now that that's gone, I find myself you know, I found myself, I don't think I'm there anymore, but I found myself dreading an entire day of not working. Isn't that amazing that, um, you know, I, I look back at my working days and I miss them, <laughs> but I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, I'm, I'm really happy where I am. I'm really happy that I get to look at a let at a maple syrup bottle and think what are what is the potential for this um so think about what your purpose for each day is whether it's small um or if, or if it's significant and and try to think about how what the relationship is for you between what that self-talk is when you wake up in the morning and that long-term patience, that long-term faith. Um, and remember that idea about faith is not just how I feel when I wake up. You know, I'm going to most likely when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to feel poopy. That's what I do. It's just what I do. But um, it's more the faith is in how I live. And that's how I just keep trudging the road, you know, um, living with intention and continuing to try to cultivate um, patience and cultivate faith um, and keep that slow burning candle um, lit, you know, um, through the ups and downs of what's going on in my recovery. And, uh, and that's what I've got. So thank you for joining me today. And if you enjoyed the episode, please share it. And uh, feel free to reach out to me if you need support or you have suggestions for any future topics. And I will talk to you. Too.